Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Lucky Lucky well, and, no, we, uh, ha we had no waterfall in the background like we had last year. We did a great interview. <laughs> you guys couldn't hear it because it's just. <laughs> <laughs> it was a problem on the last MVP summit. Uh, we, we both talked about a lot of things, and I liked it a lot. But I was so stupid to place a us in front of a waterfall. And when and when I hear the record, it was a good, a nice visual, yeah. Um, but when I hear it, um, I couldn't hear you talk. It was only the waterfall. It will forever be known as the lost blog. <laughs> Yes. The lost blog of yeah. the Seattle Aquarium, or wherever the heck we were. Yeah, we went to Seattle. So we talked a couple of years ago at another, it was a summit, or I think One and was, a half years. That was the year of the three summits. <laughs> <laughs> will never happen again. Yeah, it was. Yeah. We talked there about PowerShell. Yeah. Now, I don't want to beat that to death too much. It's not that terrible. Before we started this, you, you sad me. It sounds like you don't <laughs> believe in PowerShell. That's you know, Mark, you know, I'm, uh, that's not true. I'm a big believer in PowerShell, but I have a slightly different uh, um, opinion than you have, and I, I think it's nice to talk about it. I have the opinion, uh, oh, oh, I would say the other way. I'm in the moment doing jobs where PowerShell is absolutely I work in the service provider area, I work in the enterprise area, and I do things that had to be repeated. Sure. So uh, this, therefore, PowerShell is great, and more than 50% of my time, my working time, I'm doing PowerShell. I like it, I love it. Yes, but on the other hand, if, uh, and I challenge you on that, uh, I asked you before that, if I do, for example, uh, I have to do a user in Active Directory, something once a year. Something one-off. Yes, once, once a year. Let, and, let, let me uh, give you a great example. Yeah. As we were talking, Don Demand, I did this just recently. Okay. Just recently, I needed to build a new domain controller. Okay. I've got a little domain that I just use for, for me, so I, I only have one domain controller. And that, that led to... I don't believe that. No, no, no <laughs> honestly, honestly, yeah, I could spit up a virtual machine, but there's a, you know, I paid for my license, of course. <laughs> I'm not, you know, not going to spend $822 just to have a second okay. domain controller. Because the thing, I do an image backup every night. It's just me. Yeah. You know, so I mean... When people say never do something, that's usually a bad rule. Or certainly, you can break the rules as long as you know what they are, yeah. and as long as you know why they're there. Okay. But it was it was time. I mean, it was time. I needed to to make a new DC and retire the old one. I'm running this on little little compact two hundred dollar computers. So it's just you know, not much going on there. Anyway, so as I was building it, I said, you know, I want to be able to load this. Okay. And why? Yeah. Well, because you talk about things that are repeatable. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why you have to repeat things that normally aren't repeatable. That's yeah. disaster recovery. Okay. So you think about it. If you're in an organization and you've done some work, my feeling is this. If it, if it takes you more than 30 seconds to figure out how to do on PowerShell, you make a note of it. I have a one note. Okay. Stuff I learned in PowerShell. Okay. <laughs> a big one, maybe. <laughs> because it grows every day, you know. But it, there's a, we're very bad, we as humans, are very bad at remembering what's easy and what isn't. Like, oh, that was easy, I could do it again. It was easy because you were, your brain was loaded up, you were ready, you're in PowerShell mode or GUI mode or whatever it was that you were doing. A lot of us wear a lot of hats. You, know, you might be in a situation where if you're building a server, you only do that once a year. Mm -hmm. When you think about it, when you load your head up so you're build, server building guy, then it seems really easy. Two weeks later, after you've had to build a SQL database, all that stuff's gone out of your head. Yeah. So the more of that that you can have in a disaster recovery document, or whatever we want to call it, business continuity document, mm -hmm. the better. Great. But do you, you can write different kinds of disaster recovery documents. Open up Word. Type. Paste in screenshots. Oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, you're right. Our friend Aiden Finn yeah. wrote a great book about, uh, about Hyper-V, yeah. as you know. And... One of the things I loved about it was, for example, you know, in Hyper-V, you have to show people how to do constrained Kerberos delegation. Yeah, yeah. And for those who don't know, that sounds like sort of Fifty Shades of Grey stuff. But, you know, <laughs> no, it's not. But it's, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's not. And to do it, it's click, 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 click. Documenting that would have been painful. Yeah. Aiden showed us two lines of PowerShell that did it. And I said, Aiden, that was brilliant. How did you do it? He says, I got tired of taking screenshots. <laughs> so for him, it was worthwhile doing that. Whether you do a, a, a copy the screenshots and write some, some word, 
Or if you do happen to do PowerShell, mm -hmm. here's another side benefit of PowerShell is you just copy that line that worked into your OneNote. Yeah, basically you were saying when you have your PowerShell logs, it's the documentation. Ah. And you go right. Yeah. So I built the domain controller the first time. Yeah. Got it working. And I wiped it. Then I went back and I created an auto unattend.xml file. Yeah. So I had I had server on a USB stick, installation on a USB stick. I created the XML file. You can create with Windows System Image Manager, and I'm I'm sure your listeners or your or our viewers have seen it before. If not, then Google it. There's a lot of good stuff out there. I have a newsletter on it. Many many people. Basically, it's a GUI where you pick and choose stuff about I want my computer to have this name and blah 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 blah. One TCP IP static address and so on. So you can build a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. So the second time after I wiped the hardware, I did it again. And it got me about 90% of there. Then there was the question of I had to configure the firewall. Now, yes, I know you're going to say click, 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 click. You know what? First of all, the firewall GUI is no fun at all. No fun yeah, at no, all. It so I looked at, I, I, it took me 20 minutes to look at the PowerShell commands to control the firewall. And by the way, they become very helpful. Yeah. Because if you want to, what is it? If you want to turn on WinRM, yeah. then and you've got you've got a public facing NIC. I'm doing this from memory. I may have yeah. this wrong. The WinRM config routine stops you dead. He says, I'm not going to allow this. And sometimes you're like, you know what? I know what I'm doing. Let me, okay, let me. Okay. can't do it from doing. But you can using the PowerShell firewall profile commands. Okay. So you could, you could swap things around. It's just it's just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Anyway, so so what did I do? It took me a little longer. Yes, and I did it a third time. By the way, I was going to keep at it until I had a just pop this in. It were automated. So auto unattend that XML was my first piece. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of PowerShell from there. And of course, if I were smarter, like my friend Jeff Hicks, I would have set up a PowerShell workflow or something like that. Okay, yeah. Well, no, no, I mean, the, the, the workflows are great because I mean, it's like a batch file, but it survives reboots. That's yeah. cool. That's really neat. I, I got the concept, and I mm -hmm. even have a friend of mine and I, we haven't done one, but I'm honest, I'm not, I, I'm not getting in yet. Really, so I have to play a little bit more with it, and I think it's great. And then there is SMA, uh, uh, SMA, yeah, SMA um, service management automation, and you have that even okay. in Azure to to do workflows and automate there. That's there's cool things there, but you have to learn a little bit, and uh, you need a good teacher, don't you? Um, Jeff Hicks has done a lot of stuff. He's written some stuff. He's done some videos, and I know that he's done presentations. That'd be the first place I'd go. Is I would look for. I would just Google Jeffrey Hicks and, and PowerShell workflow. Yeah. And you're probably going to get some good resources there. There's other guys too, but Jeff seems to be the guy who's just. Yeah. But you are even also uh, teaching a lot, though. Well, not not workflow. I don't understand but PowerShell workflow. PowerShell. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm, here's the thing. The cloud is here. Mm -hmm. And the cloud has become successful much more quickly than I thought it would. Okay. And I never, you know, I, I did talks about four years ago about, you know, why the cloud was a bad <coughs> idea and these are things to concern yourself with and you're going to make this choice. And I completely missed the boat. Okay. Here's what happened. Amazon has cut the price of their services yeah. like 24 times in the last year or something insane, two years, something like that. It has gotten, the cloud has gotten so cheap that if you and I are running the business, you're the boss, I'm the CIO, and I'm saying, Karsten, that cloud's a bad idea because of security, blah, blah, whatever the concern is. At one point, you turn to me and say, Mark, our IT costs are astounding compared to our competitors. What good is it if we're secure, but we're out of business? Yeah. And so a lot of people, I think, are more and more people who will say, I would never do the cloud. They're looking at the cost and saying, crap, I can't not be in the cloud. And I think it's even, most of the time, it's more secure than the stuff you have in your company. Even if you look at the small and medium business, uh, they are not really secure. And I think if you, for example, take Microsoft Azure, it's much more secure. And Microsoft is doing a lot of stuff there uh, to make it secure. And maybe they are coming from things out in the future. We are not allowed to talk about yet, but uh, I hope there will be more security. And uh, I'm coming from Germany, and you know the Germans are very, very security sensitive. Uh, we, my wife is Office 365 MVP, as you know. We we suffer a little bit of the of the um, how it's called in English angst, uh, angst fear or angst is, is also in, in English about the public stuff. 
Yeah. Mm. But I think we will get more and more adoption. The price is a, is a big thing, as you, as you Not mentioned. Not the prices, are it? The services. Yeah. I just been to a lecture that I can't talk to you about because they'll throw me yeah. out of the program. <laughs> but there's a there's a thing we have to do in Active Directory. Oh, that involves planning and this and that and the other thing, you know. Because unless you're a small network, you can't just start up a domain control. Yeah. If you've got a, if you've got six or twelve of them, you're planning, you're doing sites, blah 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 blah. You're monitoring. They're going to have a service in Azure that just makes it. That's AD administrators are in trouble. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, okay. it's not that good, but it's. But it's certainly, certainly interesting. Um, and so things, are, you know, the, the, the ground is shifting under our feet. There are two things I want to say about the cloud. One is the ground is shifting under our feet because the boss is going to move us to the cloud. Now, it doesn't mean the end of our jobs, yeah. but it means the end of the jobs for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I think the IT pro population, I could be wrong. I hope I am. I think the IT pro population in 10 years will be half the size okay. that it is now. Okay. Well, guess how they decide which guy to get rid of and which guy to keep? Well, it's the more productive people that are, okay? Uh, okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm getting where you're going. Okay. All you IT pros that have bought my books or listened to my videos or been to my talks, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to do something for you. I want to make sure that you're the person who stays and not the person who goes. It's all about productivity, right? If you're the boss and, and your guy Tom, you get five times as much done in a day as your guy Mark, well, Mark's going to be sent back, yeah, you know? That's right, yeah. And as you know, PowerShell or other stuff. If you're a system center guy, I'm not. But if you're a system center guy, you learn orchestrator, you learn, you know, service automate service automation? Was it service, service manager? Service management Ser automation. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a tool. It was called like service something or other. In, in any case. Um, the more automation <laughs> tools that you learn, the more the boss is going to see you as being really productive. Yeah. You know, let's kind of think of it this way. Who, who do most organizations value more? Developers or us IT pros? I kind of think they think the developers because okay. the developers are building tools for them. Maybe tools you sell to someone and make money. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're tools that, again, let you take the work. But consider this. Do you know anybody who resets passwords in a company anymore? No. It's all self-service automation. Everything's going to be like that. And it's, so It's the way to go. I'm, I'm with you. It absolutely is. You know? Maybe one answer is become a developer. You know? but, uh, so so, okay, if, so, me, so that, that's, that's the first thing. Okay, you have another yeah, yeah. one. Okay. Second thing, though, I'm still going to have to be the cloud gnostic here, um, in that I'm a little scared because yes, I am certain that Azure, Office 365, Amazon, AWS, whatever, are more secure than most organizations. Mm -hmm. But the other problem I have is the ecosystem problem. Now, here in the United States, in my country, uh, 50 years ago, we grew corn and wheat and lots of different strains. Mm -hmm. Companies have come in and they've built more productive corn, more productive wheat, and at this point, I'm exaggerating, but there's one strain of corn which is which grows at 99% of the fields. Now, where have I heard this story before? Of course, the Irish in the middle 1800s decided that a particular potato they liked, the one they liked, I think it was called a lily white or something like that, okay. because it looked good, it was pretty, you know, and that sort of thing. So it's the only species of potato growing in, on, on the island of Ireland. What happens? A, a potato blight comes in in the bilge water of a ship. And from the time it infected the first potato to the time it killed the last one on the island was only 17 days. Wow. I didn't and, know that. And you, you and you know what that led to. Yeah. It's, it's my fear monoculture? Or... Monoculture, exa exactly. I mean, yeah. one of the things we're learning over and over and over again is that we need biodiversity because biodiversity is defense in depth okay. when it comes to, to sustaining the ecosystem. I'm sure Microsoft does a great job, and they may be the best cloud provider. I'm not smart enough to be able to tell you that. But whoever that is, if it's Amazon, if it's Rackspace, if it's Google, I'll go to Google, then uh, at some point there's going to be vulnerability. Yeah. Computers can infect a whole lot quicker than potatoes can. Yeah. Might not be 17 days, it could be 17 minutes. Okay. You know, And that would be the beginning of a really bad day at the office. So I'd like to see more diversity. Use the cloud? Absolutely. But do keep some on-prem around. Yeah, so, so you would say you are, your favorite is a hybrid model. Yeah. Do something in the cloud of best there and keep other things on premise and do kind of hybrid, uh, connect both worlds and, uh, and get the best you want. And think of it this way. If you're thinking about going to the cloud, you've got a plan. Mm -hmm. And so if you're the boss, I'm going to say, okay, Carson, it's going to cost us this much to get into the cloud and this is what it cost us per month. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, Mark, you didn't do your whole job. Do you have a step-by-step -step plan to get out of the cloud? 
What's it going to cost? Now, by the way, it's not going to be cheap because uploading your data to the cloud is free. Oh, but getting it back, that's not free. So you know, I, I've helped people with cloud adoption, and these are just my overall rules. Figure out how much it's going to cost to get in. Be sure to figure out how much it costs to get out. Yeah. And step-by-step -step tested procedures. Think about it. If a cloud service goes down, you're up a creek. And so we all should have disaster recovery plans. Part of your disaster recovery plan should be declouding. I didn't thought about that uh, yet, but you are absolutely right. Well, think about it. You use Office 365. I use Office 365. Do you know how to stand up an SMTP server, mess with your DNS, and have, let's say, a Karsten, you know, SMTP server, you know, e your email backup and running, call it six hours. I, I know that still, but the, the, the knowledge is fading because I'm doing other things. And maybe in five year, years, I'm not, I'm not be able to install Exchange anymore. No, I, no, yes, but in five years, maybe not. You're right. You have to have a disaster recovery plan, and that should contain a decloud thing. Yeah? I'm right. You're right, really. So, uh, Mark, if we want to know more about the stuff you are doing, where can people find you in the internet? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm at manasi.com, M-I-N-A-S-I.com. Uh, and they can always email me at help, H-E-L-P, at manasi.com. But uh, sort of things, my cloud talks, you can find them around the web. I've done a number of them for TechEd, so they're, they're, they're on Channel 9. Yeah. Uh, I do a, I have a cloud talk that I sell on CD. It's a little old. I actually uh, heard that. On the PowerShell stuff? It's been a really good year because I told you that, you know, I, this is my give back to the IT pros who've kept me in business. So I'm going to convince you all that PowerShell's the way to go and that it's easy. Yeah. Yes. And I've been working around with a class, but I finally got it. I finally love the flow of this. Okay. Yes. You know, I start out and my little yes. shtick about why you should learn PowerShell. So but if you already paid a thousand dollars to be in class, you probably are already convinced, right? Okay. We start out with just syntax. Here's some. Here's, we're going to take one PowerShell command and talk about it for three hours, <laughs> because you know there's the whole. I think many of our listeners will know that it's a there's a verb dash noun approach, right? And and there's lots of there's lots of parameters. PowerShell commands can be very 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 long. Well, that's true too. That's true. Yeah. You need to type just dumb typing. You need to just type five or six PowerShell commandlets to see. Because like I'm so. I'm so used to PowerShell. I don't make the dumb mistakes anymore. I make different, bigger dumb mistakes. But if you're just getting started, you're going to, I don't know, put the dash before or after, something like that. Yeah. I walk around and I watch. And once everybody's ready for the feel, yeah. Yeah. Get the feel yeah, I'm like, one. from there we talk about how to shorten things, how to shorten a parameter, how to read the help. That's so important. Okay. You know, a lot of people. Okay, if you're stuck and you want to do something with PowerShell, what are you going to do? You're going to Google it like everybody does. Don't. We're up to PowerShell 5. PowerShell's so much fun that everybody wants to write about it. You can ask a question, and you might get a PowerShell 1 answer from your Googling. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's probably the hard way, and there's probably a better way at this point. Help. The PowerShell help is actually quite useful. Okay. So I get people yeah. here PowerShell help. At this point, we're ready to play a little bit with automation. People are afraid of that. A lot of people are, you got to remember, a lot of people are afraid of the command line because they've been beaten by it before. Okay, you know, well, they're afraid of automation. I'm not a coder, you but as you know, you can take a couple of PowerShell commandlets, glue them together with a thing called the pipeline. We're talking about the pipeline at that point. And it's just, and it's amazing stuff. You know that it's, that how, how cool, cool it is. And the way I explain it is, it, when you saw the first Star Wars movie, you know, where we meet Han and Princess Leia and they blow up the Death Star, you know. Now at the end of that movie, he's like, oh, that was fun. I, I can't wait for the next one. And of course, there are five more movies. When you walked out of that theater, would you have imagined that the main character in the Star Wars movies is? Uh, Luke? No! Who is it? Who's the one guy? That's Han, a, Han Solo? No, no, who's the one guy? It's in all six movies. The one guy. The, the little one? <laughs> oh no, Darth Vader, of <laughs> course. Yeah. No, Darth, Star Wars is the story of Darth Vader. Is it? Sure. I, never, I, I didn't see it that way. But He's uh, the one character <laughs> that threads, thre thre so, threads the, the entire thing. We think so basically now, from now I'm really curious how you get Darth Vader and PowerShell together. Would you say PowerShell is evil? I am saying, <laughs> I'm saying that it's the Force. Um, no, I'm saying that when when you watch the end of that first Star Wars movie, yeah. if I had said Carson, who do you think is going to be in the other five movies? Most of us would not have guessed Darth Vader. 
But I have to tell you, as a guy who used to do drama, yeah. uh, when I was in high school, a little bit in college, I, I greatly loved acting. I, I'm not good enough that I could you know, do it for a living. But if you like doing plays, have you, have you ever done much acting? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, a, I'm an actor. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I, I do so, that. if you get your pick of the roles, do you want to be the good guy or the bad guy? This is easy. You want to be the bad guy. The bad guy I is usually, so much fun. I usually want to curse be the you, good guy. Jack Dalton. But last year I played a bad guy. Bad guy. <laughs> it was fun. I, I, it's got, I, I had to fun. get used to it, but uh, it was fun. You had to get used to it. There's no inner bad guy that you. Yeah, maybe that there you is. Released. <laughs> <Ask> my wife. <laughs> so, so and you do this great class. Are you? Well, so, so, there's so, more. No, but I'm saying in PowerShell the pipeline is is Vader. Yeah. It's the star of the show. Okay. Because it's just, you think, what a small thing. It's the way everything works. Okay. It is the center of how PowerShell becomes. That's the power yeah. in PowerShell. Okay. Is, is the pipeline is the power. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, we start doing automation. Uh, once we're comfortable with that, and everybody's very skeptical. Like, oh, I don't think I can write code. You're not writing code. And then we do start writing code. We do some scripts. Yeah. Which is great. Um, of course, we do some WMI. A little bit on remoting. Okay. You know, because cool. everyone's favorite, every geek's favorite PowerShell command that is get dash WMI object. <laughs> yes, of course it every, is. <laughs> no, everything's in there, so you got to show them a little bit of it. And and remoting, because as, as you know, the remoting is, and if you don't know, remoting is so cool. The way, the fact that they built PowerShell from the get-go with with secure remoting, that also is the power. Mm. I'm sitting at my, my desk, and I said to 200 machines, do this now. Right. Fantastic really stuff. Yeah. And it's beyond the scope of the course because we don't have time but PowerShell fans will know and if not you'll you'll learn when, when you're reading that the great thing about the remoting is you can fine tune it so much and get a constrained endpoint you've heard of these no constrained endpoint is I'm a server yeah. you're a regular old guy and maybe an admin and I give you a doorway to do some kind of administration on okay it. okay it's called a constrained endpoint because we can like for example let's say there are 2300 commandlets in PowerShell and each commandlet has 50 parameters. With a constrained endpoint, I'm just giving the simple version. With a constrained endpoint, I could say, you know what? You can only use these two commandlets, and you only get these three parameters. I could say get dash a to user is the only thing you could use. That's cool. I didn't know it. Oh, is, it's it like, is it like just enough admin? Is it in the way to that? Yes, constrained PowerShell endpoints are they're the they're the sword and the stone. That's okay. how Jeffrey and his team built the just in time, just enough administration. Oh, oh, cool. And if you haven't talked to, Je to Jeffrey or one of the PowerShell guys about JIT, it's really really cool stuff. I, it's I, definitely a topic. I think I saw a session about it, and I think it's great. But also the administrators have to get around it, and normally the administrator <laughs> has the power. Here we have now the possibilities to give them only the power for just one thing at that time. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's it, also neat because security. We need security. Exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. You know, and I'm hearing more and more about this because the bad guys are so. You know, I mean, think about the situation. Where, so, how do I get into your organization? How do I get get close enough to do it? Pass the hash or something yeah. like that. Well, I find an account that's got some power. Yeah. And I exploit it. So I know your username. You're an administrator. That's step one. How do I get in? Well, uh, maybe I socially engineer the password from you. Maybe I just try. Maybe I just guess. Yeah. Once I've got your account, I think the number is something like within 14 hours, I will have compromised the network. And then over the next two years, I'm stealing data or obscuring data, and on average it takes two years to find it. Yeah. So, you know, what we've got now isn't working because the bad guys keep getting smarter. Yeah, yeah. You, know, right. you might have heard of the golden ticket stuff that was talked about at Black Hat uh, this last summer. It's basically the idea is you're in a Kerberos world. Yeah. Uh, part of what you get, I'm um, simplifying is a ticket granting ticket. A ticket granting ticket gives you the right to come over and say, hey, I want a service ticket to this, that, or the other thing. Yeah, I okay. here and I was well, there's a way to blow this up. And again, I am some to get me. Blow this up to have all power all the time. It's called the golden ticket attack. Okay, I didn't know that. But I'm not so the security guy. My, my wife is much very interested in security, so uh, I hope she knows it. <laughs> well, cool. you know, two, two key words that all of our listeners should be looking at, nothing to do with PowerShell, on the security side is pass the hash. Yeah. You've heard that phrase before. I know before, that, yeah. But Microsoft updated their white paper just recently. Okay. And so it's got a lot better information, more mitigation information. Uh, we don't have time to talk about it here, but please get a hold of that white paper. That's important. The other thing is Google around about the golden ticket because it's interesting stuff. And it's the beginning, I think. It's exposed the 
something that we always knew was possible with 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 uh, Kerberos. Unfortunately, some some jerk at Black Hat. <laughs> it's like when what's his name uh, talked about DNS problems a few years ago at, at Black Hat, and forced everybody to go back and clean up their DNS servers. Mm -hmm. And that same way, I don't know how Microsoft's going to respond to it. I don't know how Linux is going to respond to it, but there's going to be some changes in, uh, in, in administration. Expect to see a different world, mm -hmm. where like what is some of the things that uh, that we saw, but like. So, like, what's Microsoft been adding to Azure that we can talk about? Multi-factor authentication. They bought Phone Factor, gosh, what, two years ago or something like that. Mm. And on my Office 365, I have something set up so that if my administrator account, me, tries to make a big change, you get a it, calls, phone. Yeah. it calls my cell, to leaves me Two-factor authentication with uh, Azure AD is really great, I, I think. You, if you break, your password is breached, you need another uh, authentication, like your your phone call. You have to have the phone, yeah. and uh, if I steal your password or I get it, I have also to steal your phone to get right. access. Exactly. And it's another thing. But I want to ask you about your Porsche course. It okay. sounds more than a day. It's Is two, it two days. It's two days, yeah. So when we last talked, you have only a one-day course, right. but you extended it uh, on... Uh, to another to two days, right. great, and uh, maybe we have well, so a chance to get this course to Europe sometime. That right? would be lovely. I would, that would be lovely. If our viewers are interested in that, maybe they they uh, should talk to you. They send me a mail, <laughs> and I will try to get you to Europe, and we do the two, two here's, day course. Here's the reason it becomes two days. Yeah. You know, hands on is the best way to learn anything. Yeah. But it takes twice as long as yeah. a lecture, in my experience. I know that, yeah. When we talked a year and a half, two years ago, I was doing a lecture class. Yeah. And the problem is, you know, you go a whole day, and these guys are itching to try it. I felt really bad. It's just, yeah. I wasn't feeling as happy about it. Because I'm thinking, if I'm in their shoes, I'm not paying attention to the fat guy. I'm, I'm firing up my old command prompt and trying to trying to try things yeah. out. So I think it's, it's better overall for everybody. I've had a tremendous amount of luck with a lot of old guys, guys like me, who've been administrators for 20, 30 years. And, are scared of the command line, but at the end of the two days, you're like, so it's just, and I believe, I don't think you can teach anyone anything. I think all you can do is inspire them to want to learn it. Yeah. And so if, you, if you've got a good instructor, you enjoy the guy, he makes you laugh, or something like a woman, uh, then you're, because I mean, you can't learn something in two days. I stick it in your head and most of it falls out. But enough will be left. Andrew motivated enough to say, I like that. Let's go back and look at the book. Let's go back and relearn it. And you know, it's, it's sort of like, a buddy of mine was telling me that he was in a, he was working in a large company doing some consulting, and they had this 800 line VP script that let them go out, search the Active Directory, and find people at a particular criterion. That's one command <laughs> in PowerShell. I mean, it's a long one because of the specific criteria that they had. And there is a dark force, a pipe, pipelining maybe uh, included in that, but cool. Mark, this is great talking to you, and I. I could talk and listen to you another hour, <laughs> but you, you have a session now going on and I have to go back to the Hyper-V building because there's some great stuff. I want to thank you for, for this. It was, it was really fun to talk to you again. It always is. Thank and you so much, I friend. hope we can do that uh, PowerShell thing in Germany or in, in Europe. And well, I, let's not talk this into a, turn this into a marketing yeah, we do. video. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but I, I was really... Uh, you, you have such a nice style to teach, and I think you, you teach uh, some kind of teaching that is involved, but it's so nice to hear how you talk about it. So I'm, I want to try some things out. So <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So I hope we will meet again next year, maybe, or Ticket is uh, involving to something else. Uh, you Ignite. Were, uh, <laughs> Ignite. Uh, I hope you will speak at Ignite. Me too. Yeah, Gosh, I, I hope it's so, not too. ticket. I, I heard it's something else, and maybe they found the speaker on another way. So uh, we'll see. And uh, I'm looking forward. Maybe I will come to. It is in not Chicago. It is in. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a big city in the United States. It, it's, I used to know. It's uh, in the beginning of May, and uh, it's a five-day event. And I hope we meet there. Absolutely. Otherwise, we meet in uh, Redmond, hopefully again next November. It's just about the end of the summit, so you guys have a safe trip home back to Germany. Thank you, man. Take care. Thanks, everybody.